Hi all, let's have a look at another amazing game from the TSAC Season 18 Super Final. So in round 33, Leela was playing white against Stockfish. We have e4, c5, the Sicilian defense. And the opening book goes into the Sicilian dragon. The Sicilian dragon, after knight c3, g6, is actually named after a star formation, not uh, the fictional kind of animal apparently so it's a star formation check it out on wiki uh, now Fisher actually condemned in the 70s the dragon as if you could just use the h files sack sack and mate let's see bishop e3 bishop g7 this is the Yugoslav variation this structure with f3 is set up for white to castle queenside essentially play h4 you know maybe h5 bishop h6 later and sack sack and mate it is like the fish is saying so black did castle kingside because they're forced to queen d2 knight c6 we have bishop c4 now knight d7 now this is a bit of a, a departure this and the book move that they they have to use here so usually for example you know bishop d7 is more popular by far. So knight d7, a bit of a rare bird. Tivyarkov, one of the Sicilian dragon exponents, though, has used it in the past. We see in this particular game, Leela just casting queenside. In the Stockfish game, we've already actually covered on the channel, if you want to check out round 34. Stockfish played h4, and after h5, castled queenside. And Leela played a brilliant conception with the queen getting it out and actually sacrificing the queen. Here, Stockfish with the black pieces actually blocks the Queen's route to a5. So it's a completely different plan now. Tempo gaining on the bishop on c4. We have bishop e2. And now d5, a quick d5 for us. It seems Stockfish has a priority of trying to exchange Queens here. There's a tiny little downside of this which is about to be revealed. Uh, if we look at alternatives, though, just before we get into things, on knight b6, uh, we ha we have in this game uh, bishop e2, but bishop b3 has actually been seen before. And you might think that's pretty logical to keep on the diagonal. Now, maybe, you know, Leela was afraid of things like the, the bishop being harassed there as a sort of tactical target. It turns out there's a couple of uh, over-the-board games for example, like this, this is a uh, a key game. Shirov, Alexei Shirov, playing with the white piece, pieces pieces against Tivyarkov, so the Sicilian dragon exponent. And actually, Shirov did actually leave his b3 bishop to be targeted, you know, tactically. Uh, just sacking that piece, but getting huge tactical compensation later. So this this is how the game went. Very very tactical game. Where in fact, you know, Tivyarkov uh, did seem to get uh, kind of squished with g5. Yeah, quite horrific. Uh, so Shirov totally in his elements, just carving up the Black King. And here, yeah, it's it's a horror, isn't it? So that's what happened to Tivyarkov, even with the bishop dropping back to b3. So fascinating there. And also in this line, uh, knight a5. Queen e2 has also been seen uh, before in this game of Judith Polgar against Milos. Uh, so that was in 2012. Uh, you know, much later, Queen e2. Uh, so instead of Queen d3. And in this Judith Polgar game, yeah, the bishop wasn't like victimized so much. But white does get a very strong attack anyway, like this. It's uh, I don't know it looks it looks a bit strange to allow what Black's done have the double pawns, but eventually the H file still is a dangerous weapon now to use against Black. Black had to compromise. We have that nasty pin tempo gaining on the Queen, and you can see that yeah the Dragon. You need to <laughs> have specialist skills sometimes to survive onslaughts on the King side. So anyway, leader in this game. Uh, played bishop e2, didn't, didn't indulge bishop b3 stuff, which has been seen before. And we have, you know, a, is that a downside to allow d5 though? Because it has released 
the control over d5 and stockfish seems to be you know logically exploiting celebrating that with d5 here uh, if bishop d7 then actually this position is peculiar of the knight takes bishop takes the funny thing about this position even though the bishops here are not here pinning that f pawn it's still very effective it seems just to play h4 for example like this it's still very very effective uh, white should be crashing through in a lot of variations yeah it doesn't really matter that the bishops on e2 here so d5 and we have a very interesting situation where knight takes c6 was chosen this seems to be a really really good improvement over the one key over the board game i found here at a high level uh which was savchenko against mamadov so both of them above 2500 fide savchenko against mamadov h4 but it seems you know black got a position which didn't seem that bad if we look at this it didn't didn't seem that bad and you know eventually white won but it, it didn't really seem that convincing leaders move here knight takes c6 this is absolutely fascinating and and plainly strange i have to say uh what happens pretty soon after h4 queen d6 um if h5 instead trying to sort of stop h5 from white then bishop h6 here this this leads to a situation which should be very good for white you know white winning a pawn is enough actually there's a big you know queen side pawn majority there that should be enough so you know queen d6 instead of h5 black is really wanting uh to kind of unpin the pawn to play d takes and leader actually obliges and you might think well what on earth is this letting black off with this situation the queens are off surely there's no fun to be had here i think it takes a great positional connoisseur to realize something about this position after the knight takes e4 and that is this knight is potentially a losing piece a reason for black's downfall in this position forget mating the black king uh it's actually this knight because white can actually build pressure on this d-file to cut the knight out of using the d-file well white's also got a strong grip over c5 here we see bishop f5 as an example of some of the horror if knight d5 then bishop c5 and now the threat is c4 and it's very unpleasant for black this situation even though it's simplified with the queens off here for example just winning this pawn and then taking on f8 allowing the simplification is much better for white it's it is it is essentially winning advantage so we have this move um bishop f5 here not trying to play knight d5 the forcing move bishop f5 and now we have c4 here bishop takes e4 and again you might think well is this really a big deal problem for black if knight d7 had been played instead then g4 is embarrassing here just taking on d7 leaves the bishop stranded actually that's winning for white bishop stranded there and uh, if the bishop went back to e6 with the knight on d7 knight g5 is torture it's going to shred black's pawn structure even more that's just horrible for black that's going to be a winning positional advantage as well so uh c4 bishop takes e4 and you might think this is this is surely this situation surely black uh isn't getting mate on the h file there's no big deal it turns out this is a really really bad piece in this scenario so bad it can by itself bring out the downfall of the black the entire black position it's white's control you know of the d file here and the bishop pair and even though you might argue well white's got the isolated e pawn and in fact an isolated g pawn as well from a pawn island perspective you know white isn't that great you know free pawn islands same with black free pawn islands but look at this after rook fd8 we have rook hd1 and we can see big problems for black contesting that file 
Uh, so the battle of the D file is lost here. And we have King F8 being played. If Rook E8, for example, King C2, this situation uh, with C5 there being pressed for the Black Knight to be like wrecked on A8 is just showing what a terrible piece that can be. And even if it's retrieved from the corner like resourcefully, then C6 could become a target. So yes, it's it's really uh, forming a, a losing uh, downside this this knight. So we have uh, you know King F8, C5, and then Knight A4 because ridiculously, if the knight dared to play this in this position, Rook D8 is checkmate. So yes, that uh, would be quick, wouldn't it? So yeah, Knight A4, but now. We have simply bishop d1 forcing stockfish to transition essentially to a completely lost end game. There's been no fight in this game. Bishop takes b2. Two pieces uh, for the rook here. The bishops can really, you know, was hitting c6 here. So after this, <laughs> you know, it, it isn't as if the two bishops are too worried about this rook. Uh, there's hardly any entry points for the rook. And now this is sealing down the pawns on, on light squares. So the bishop can really blockade these pawns. We have king e7, bishop d4, king e8. And white at leisure can improve the position. And it seems soon, in fact, black is encouraged to play a5. You might think, well, that's a committal pawn move. Pawns don't go backwards. So what's the story of having to play a5? Because isn't that kind of a target, potentially, to the king coming to a4, maybe later with bishop c3? If black tried to play something like rook c7, uh, bishop a6, and, and this rook is running out of breathing space quite often. For example, this situation, bishop f6, the rook's getting lost. It's very difficult to manage this rook in this scenario. On king c7, as another example, you know, it seems white can kind of win material sometimes if a5 is played later anyway. Um, if rook b7, here's another example. Uh, well, <laughs> yeah, it's it's just it's just it's very tricky to handle the bishops here. You know, things like bishop a6 and bishop e5. So a5 may be. You know, it was going downhill by this point. So king c3, rook b4. We have bishop f6. And now king c7, a3, king c4. Okay, bishop c3. And now the king comes to help target the a5 pawn. No entry points there. You can see these, these bishops are, are like controlling all the you know potential entry points on the d file. So a5 is just being picked off here at leisure. It's the end it's the end of the game really. This this really spells end of game. It's in my view this is this was just mysterious to me how Stockfish really didn't seem to give much of a fight in this particular game. Uh so the game continues a little bit with this a pawn being dragged down the board now. So it becomes more important there as a possible one and also even a mating mechanism later potentially so yeah stockfish isn't really able to do that much the king's now coming in doesn't mind about a5 there is if a5 is taken it's um the thing is here white has a crushing move in fact can you guess what could white play here which would seal the deal Okay, just bishop takes e6, and the bishop against the rook is absolutely winning here because of that past e pawn crashing through. So yeah, it, it is kind of a hopeless situation now. So we have uh, king d6, and the game actually ended here. If the game continued with rook takes, okay, the bishop goes back. c6 is about to drop after the bishop moves out of the way. So c6 drops. And in fact, if the game continued, white could even pursue... A mating campaign here it doesn't even have to be about queening the pawns. The bishops can come like this and the king like that. 
for a sort of mating attack, for example, like this, is one of the options for winning this game from that final position. Uh, so, yeah, you know, this was really a fascinating game. And you would have thought that Stockfish with the white pieces was, you know, nearly like 90% plus going to win the next game. But check out the video on the King's Crusher channel for round 34 to recap the spectacular thing that happened. There wasn't this bad piece downfall issue because maybe Lila realized the dangers kind of very, very early on and did this queen sack line, stunning queen sack line. And it turns out in the Sicilian dragon, maybe Leela is reviving some of the dragon uh, uh, variations because I, I've also, some some people have recommended some other dragon games where there's been queen sacrifices. So something is going on in that Sicilian dragon where maybe the neural networks can see uh, some of the more dynamic potential of the black position. But Stockfish played in a slightly passive way and just got basically a losing bad piece quite early on, which Lila was quite content and, uh, to slowly exploit. You know, there's no desperation for Lila to play like Mikhail Tal going for the checkmate. No, Lila can play like Karpov or Petrosian, whatever you know, number of moves it takes. More like Karpov, because Karpov would use Petrosian style to sort of win games in his interview. He actually sort of basically expressed that. Trojan style, but to win, not to draw. So yeah, Karpovian, you could say, just based on a bad piece, basically representing a complete losing downside straight out of the opening. I just thought this was a fascinating revelation and a much crisper, cleaner example of how to play the position than the uh, Mamadov uh, uh, game example was it uh, one of the one of the high level stem games so a really you know fantastic example of a bad piece being exploited actually okay i hope you got something from it like i, I feel i did if you want to check out the playlists bitly slash leela chess or bitly slash stockfish chess if you want to check out the uh suave discord forum chat forum there's a game suggestion forum in there come and challenge me at chess bold bitly slash chess bold or king's crusher tv and I'll be able to invite you for a game later if you just register at, at uh, Chess Mold. Okay, comments, questions, likes, subscribes with the notification bell. Really appreciated. Thanks so much.